Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're going to have a technical seminar covering the GM Hydromatic four-speed transmission used in the Silver Clouds and the early post-war cars. We're going to service it and we're going to take the valve body, the little control unit, apart and I'm going to discuss how it works. I'll, sh I'll do some air checks and I'll show you how things kind of work inside. All right, now we're going to adjust the bands. It's going to be easier to see. If you want to swing around here, sorry about your shoes, but right up here, there's some set screws and bolts. And what they do is they, they are the opposite side of the band. The band's just a big piece of metal. The rear one is just one loop, and it has a pin on one side that hooks into this lever, and the other side has a hole that hooks into a bolt, basically, and you adjust that bolt on the clearance. The front one is a loop, like I said before, and one part hooks onto this piston assembly and the other part hooks onto the bolt and you adjust that the same way. Now the front band you have to remove this access plug right here to get in there to screw that special tool that should be in everyone's toolbox. It's just a little plug and you see it has an aluminum washer, sometimes they're copper. I'll probably replace this one because it's pretty messed up. Um, and you take this tool this is an adjuster here, there's a spring in there, and it's don't touch any of this stuff. Don't mess with it. This thing screws in this hole until bottoms out hand tight. So this outer housing is tight, this one is still not. And then you can run this up, and somebody can try that until you feel resistance. Somebody want to try that? Just go ahead and screw that up. Go ahead, Brock. And you turn it, and you'll feel resistance when you hit the piston. Feel uh -huh. it? Yeah. Okay, right. so once you hit that piston, the book says five turns, I say three and a half. You turn it three and a half turns. One, two, three and a half. Okay, and this, what it does, there's a spring inside here and it's, it's attached to this shaft. This thing should just barely turn. As you can see, it's really loose. So that means a band needs to be loosened. So, it's a three quarter on top. Right. It's when when you don't have the valve body and the side cover off. This is difficult from underneath you can, because it comes out to about here and you can't see it. As you can see the carpet here, you can see the carpet in his car. He does, he's missing his plate down here, but there's an access plate on the floorboard. And here's where the rubber plug normally is to get to that throttle linkage. Uh, anyways, um, so. So this band is too tight? It's too tight, correct. Mm. And to adjust the bands, do you suggest they take the valve body off because it's easier or is that... No, 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 I would not get into that. Okay. Uh, and this band is... Let's see here. Okay, so what, what I do is I back it off until this little washer here is tight. It's not loose anymore. And then I run it in the opposite direction until I can just feel it so you can feel it turns then and then you lock your cinch. You didn't have to reseat it before you tried it. Excuse me? Reseat it? Well, when you set it before, right, you determined that the washer was too loose. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have to back that off again. No, because this this it is and a then put it back Yeah, in. this is a certain amount. This is spring loaded and yeah, it floats. So once I set the band then I back it back off. And just also, these, this material is on the bands also. So they're a piece of steel where this is bonded on. That's a, a friction material. So we go back here till I feel resistance again. I always like to double check. One, two, three, and a half. And it turns. I can actually be backed off just a tiny bit more. Now the fact that it was tight, um, is not a big deal. Uh, a lot of times when you have shifting issues on a car, you can play with the band adjustments while driving it to try to compensate for the odd shifting. Okay? And because not always there's a problem in the valve body, sometimes there's just some worn out packs and all kinds of stuff like that. So you can, you can, you can, uh, 
mess with it. Is is there like you get wear on these bands, do you, but is, so is there any automatic adjustment feature? No, for the? no, it's not self-adjusting. Uh -huh. And also, the fact that it was too tight means it could have been set at the five turns. Five turns. Mm -hmm. Which is what the factory recommends. Mm -hmm. But I have found that they shift better. And this is also the source minutes. of your hard shifting. No, not necessarily. The hard shifting's in that valve body. You found it shifts better with how many turns? Three and a half. Three and a half, plus mm -hmm. the five. If you don't have this tool, are you like dead or? No, um, if you can find an original manual or get a domestic manual for the transmission overhaul, General Motors sets it with a tachometer. Um, so in other words, what you do is you hook up a tachometer to the engine, and while the car's running, you set the idle speed to a certain direction, and then they tell you to go to, I think it's the front band, well, both bands, you do it by RPM, and you tighten it until you see an RPM drop, and then you back it off so many turns, and that's how they set it, which is actually more accurate, and that used to be in the original Rolls-Royce transmission manual, that's how you did it, but they want you to service the things, too, so... Unfortunately, mechanics are a lot of a lot of us are thieves, and they want to do things as quick as possible to make the most money because they get paid by job. So they Rolls Royce found that people weren't servicing them when they did that. All they did was adjust the bands, charge for it, and boom, they're down the road. So they deleted that old manual and 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 tell you how to do it this way. I think originally they had it this this way too. It's just uh, mechanics. We're all thieves. I'm going to replace this. So I'll leave that off. And then the other band, since it's applied all the time, there is a tool that Rolls Royce has that, that hooks on the back of here. It's a piece of metal, is all it is. And then it goes up here and it gives you a, a setting that that's supposed to just barely touch. That setting basically is a half an inch from this housing to the face of this lever. Is a fuse. When it releases, this lever gets pushed in. It's, it's a, this is a stiff one. That's why I use air pressure. There's a lot of springs in here. And when I ever overhaul them, I take all these things apart. And there's always sludge in there. Some, they're, they're like pistons, a different size. They almost look like the valves in the valve body, only they have rotating rings on them, like piston rings. And I've seen them broken before. And like I said, on this bolt here, people have put too long bolts in there and they they interfere with this piston it cracks the housing so you know that's stuff I've run across and you want to take the governor apart these valves since they're so critical in the shifting because they tell the transmission how fast it's going that I take them apart and polish them just like those valves clean them up this is the governor here this thing right here has this piston that moves in and out <laughs> with centrifugal force let's see See how that rotates? Yeah. That works off a of centrifugal force, those two yeah. pistons, and there's springs in there too. Mm. Is that it? All right. Any All right, more questions? Great. Thanks for Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. And you got the red shower too. <laughs> Thanks very much. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>